Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for those of you that have joined us here on live stream as well. Hope this uh, hookup tonight is working better than usual. Uh, very interesting broadcast indeed we have for you tonight. I uh, want to thank uh, Brother Yosef from Israel, uh, an Orthodox brother there who sent me uh, information about one of the rabbis from the 1700s who prophesied some very unusual events that would take place right at the coming of the Mashiach, the Messiah, that is. Uh, and one of those events have already transpired, and the second one we are on the verge of seeing fulfillment of as well in the very near future. Uh, one of the first ones that he prophesied of, though, was that Crimea, that Russia, once you saw Russia take Crimea, then you would know that the footsteps of the Messiah could be heard. It would be that close to the coming of the Messiah. Now, let me quickly show you which, pro, which uh, Jewish rabbi we're speaking of here, and this is Vilna Goan. He is also was considered a genius, which his name thus speaks of uh, as uh, Ga Gaon uh, means genius. The prophecy of the Vilna, whenever you hear the Russians have captured the city of Crimea, the times of the Messiah have started, that his steps are being heard. This is a painting right here of him. Uh, also a, another painting here that was done of him as well. Uh, but specifically, oh, by the way, that's his uh, great-grandson who is alive today, lives in uh, Israel as far as I know of there, uh, Rabbi Moshe uh, Sternbuck uh, is his name there. But this is the actual prophecy that he states here. When you hear that that the Russians have captured the city of Crimea, you should know that the times of Mashiach or Messiah have started, that his steps are being heard. When you hear that the Russians have reached the city of Constantinople, which is today's Istanbul, you should put on your Shabbat clothes and don't take them off because it means that the Messiah is about to come any minute. That's pretty powerful, uh, and, and especially in light of the circumstances that are happening right now as we speak here. We know that Russia uh, has, of course, the downing of the Su-24, uh, that's a Sukhoi uh, Russian bomber, a Su-24 that was downed by an F-16 uh, fighter on um, just this past week uh, here on the 24th. Uh, we see several things that have been that have been happening that we have noticed that we believe is an escalation of the tensions in the region. On the 21st, uh, we saw that uh, that that Ukraine bombed the power uh, power lines there, which knocked out the grid to Crimea. Uh, keeping in mind that Russia has their naval fleet there in the Black Sea off of Crimea, so that was a major blow to the to the Russians there to be hit like that. Uh, it, it appears to be that there is a push to push the Russians into war. And it looks like that Vladimir Putin very, very, may very well take that bait and hit just exactly back with what's going on. Maybe more than one front that comes up with Russia, maybe on the eastern part of uh, Europe there with Ukraine, Poland, uh, Lithuania, different countries there that may end up being under an attack as well in the very near future. That is, if NATO keeps pushing at the, at the, at the uh, urging of the United States uh, Barack Obama administration, one way to keep the president in power, isn't it, to go ahead and start another war. That's exactly what the U.S. needs in order to be able to get a grip on its own economy. And, of course, Russia, with all the sanctions it's got, they're not slowing down one single bit. In fact, in another article there, no matter about the sanctions, a drop in oil prices due to the fact that so many countries are buying their oil for $15 a barrel, thanks to ISIS there and supporting uh, that big regime. And you've got to keep in mind, why would the U.S. turn a blind eye for, for the European Union to be able to buy oil from ISIS to begin with? Well, you got to remember, it is the United States that has been arming ISIS originally, as well as the Free Syrian Army. They armed them. And U.S. arm manufacturers don't want to just see the U.S. Give the, give the weapons away. They'd like to make money on it. Well, they have to turn a blind eye then to the oil sales. 
in order to be able to get paid for these weapons by ISIS members in order to continue their wage of war against uh, Basar al-Assad as well as all the other uh, unrest that is going on in the Middle East. It's also, like we've said many times before, the fulfillment of Micah chapter 7 where they actually make their own country uh, a desolation. No people living in there, according to Micah chapter 7 there. Let me just pull that up for you there. Those of you that like to follow the the prophetic side of the events that are happening there, uh, that's exactly what they want to do. We also see Hosea, being the prophecies being fulfilled in Hosea recently, uh, where, the, uh, where, where the Bible actually clearly defines that the oil from Assyria is making its way into Egypt. Well, that's kind of interesting because we find out in some of the research that we've done that, guess what? The Egyptians have worked very closely with the United States and other countries to fatten the wallets of some of the biggest oil companies in the world to make them even bigger billionaires in the first place. What better, better way to make these oil companies billionaires than to be able to get oil sold for $15, $20 a barrel from ISIS and turn around and sell it to uh, other countries for $50 to $100 a barrel there? That ought to make some billionaires, I would think. Anyway, according to Micah chapter 7, verse 13, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the fruit of their doings. See, that's Assyria right there. We, we find this out because if you back up... Um, um, let's see, which verse can we... Here we go. Verse 12, In that day also he shall come even to, to thee from Assyria and from the fortified cities and from the fortress, even to the river... And from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain, notwithstanding the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the fruit of their doings. Thank you, Syrian uh, uh, ISIS. Thank you for the United States arming you, as well as the Free Syrian Army. Thank you for all the refugees that you've sent throughout the world. I guess that's another plot, no doubt, that the New World Order is looking to do in order to justify some more acts of terror. And, and of course, you know, that was another interesting thing. They decided to get the terror, uh, to go fight terror in Syria. Well, it seems like the terror was in France re re recently, wasn't it? Or really was it Islamic terrorists? Well, I'm sure they were engaged in this, no doubt about it. But who's backing them? Well, I'm sure the very ones that are involved in all this issue going on in Syria to begin with, such as the Israelis' Mossad, is the United States' CIA and special operation forces that are, that are working there. And of course, the United States cl claiming they've been bombing ISIS. Well, Russia comes along and finds out they haven't been bombing ISIS. Who have they been bombing? Well, that's a good question. Maybe they've been bombing Assad's forces instead. Nonetheless, anyway, back to here to the rabbi here. This rabbi from, was actually born in 1720. Let me just take you back up to him real quick so you can see who I'm speaking about here. Uh, this here is Rabbi Vilna Goon, uh, a very, very intelligent uh, man when he was born. He would give his first lecture, I believe, at the age of seven years old. Uh, he spent 40 years in seclusion. Uh, yeah, he actually says it right here, it says he gave his first public discourse at the age of seven years old, just demonstrating an int intellect that was fully developed in abstract thinking as an adult. By the age of 10 years, his wisdom and the understanding of Torah was so renowned for he no longer could find a teacher with, with the command of the Torah as he, uh, known as the uh, guru, this uh, prodigy, uh, Torah giant set the standard of Torah study, absolutely devoted to God and, and the character perf uh, perfection, emulated by centuries of later students of his manuscripts and books there. He spent 40 years in seclusion studying the Word of God. Um, I think that's very, very remarkable to say the least there. Uh, regardless of what your beliefs are, if you're a believer in Yeshua, nonetheless, very, very remarkable. But he stated, though, that when we saw Russia would capture the city of Crimea, you, you would know that the times of the Messiah have started and the steps are being heard. And when you hear that the Russians have reached the city of Constantinople, Istanbul, Turkey that is, you should put on your Shabbat clothes and don't take them off because it means that the Messiah is, is about to come at any minute. Now, I bring all these things out, some of the things that are going on, the selling of the oil, etc., the downing of the Russian jet, the uh, Sukhoi Su-24, uh, uh, Su has put Russia at a major tense situation. We saw that neither, we've seen that neither Turkey nor Russia are backing down in this case. Uh, the Russian uh, navigator who did survive uh, the crash there, 
Uh, his uh, captain, the pilot, was, was killed as he was parachuting down. He was shot to death by uh, pro-Turkish forces on the ground. And, of course, Turkey claims that they were trying to rescue the pilot and the navigator. Sure they were. Trying to rescue them with bullets, I guess. What were they trying to do? Cut the parachute cords with the bullets? No doubt. Who knows? Anyway, though, they claim that they give several warnings and produce an audio recording saying they did. Well, anybody could produce a recording, no doubt about that. But the, according to the navigator, he says, we never got one single warning whatsoever. Uh, in fact, he has stayed there in the country. He wants to be a part of any retaliation that comes up against Turkey uh, for what they have done uh, to, his, uh, to the captain of his plane. So he will continue in combat missions. Russia has done heavy bombardment on the border of Syria and Turkey since then. And he also spoke about how that they could have warned us by flying up beside us. An F-16 is a, is a very fast uh, fighter jet. He could have easily caught up with them uh, to give us a warning that we were too close to their country. We would have moved. Uh, but instead, he said, the next thing we know, we are shot from behind. Well, you know, President Putin really made it quite clear when he said a stab in the back. It's exactly what they did. Uh, Turkey stabbed them in the back. Now, is it the United States pushing these pulling these triggers here for Turkey to get them to incite the violence? Is it the U.S. who is also backing uh, the Ukrainian uh, government now getting Crimea to get their power knocked out. These are things that you do when war is about to break out. You begin to go for the infrastructure of a co country. You begin to make it difficult for the country to communicate. Very interesting to say the least. And now Poland as well, the Prime Minister of Poland, is wanting to break the pact that Russia and NATO have together of 1997 that says that they would work together for the betterment of this particular region. And Russia says this is very inflammatory what they're doing there. Well, as we have all, all may already know, many of you guys that is, according to the Sputnik News there, Russia cuts all military ties with Turkey. One of the latest news that have just come out uh, as of today, all mil military contacts with Turkey have been cut following the downing of Russia's Su-24 military jet, the Russian Defense Ministry said Thursday. Uh, that was just yesterday. Today, in accordance with the previously made decision, all cooperation channels have been cut between Russia's Defense Ministry and the Turkish Armed Forces. Ministry spokesman Major General Igor uh, Kanishkanov, Konovav, excuse me, uh, told reporters this concerns all ties, not just the so-called hotline that was launched in order to avoid possible air incidents during the destru destruction of terrorist infrastructure in Syria, he added. Uh, the decision has been uh, made after Turkish jets on Tuesday had shot down a Russian Su-24 bomber which had been taken apart in Russia's anti-terror campaign in Syria. Ankara claims that it's downed the Russian plane because it violated Turkish airspace. Contrary to Turkey's uh, allegations, the Russian general staff and Syrian Air Defense Command confirmed that the Su-24 never crossed into Turkish airspace, citing precise object objective control data. Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin described the incident as a stab in the back and carried out against us by accomplices of the terrorists. By the way, that puts the U.S. in the same exact category. So what's going to happen when Russia launches an attack on Turkey? That's, I can guarantee you one thing. Let Turkey make one mistake of shooting, even shooting at another Russian plane. It will definitely be war. But it seems very obvious now we're at the brink of war with Russia and Turkey. And of course, if that happens, the United States base is there in Turkey. Do you think the U.S. is going to sit back and allow uh, Turkey just to get their clock cleaned by Russia? Now, Turkey does have a very formidable force there, no doubt, in the region. The question is, is Russia will bring in ground troops as well? It's hard to say. Following the, the downing of the Su-24 bomber, the Russian foreign ministry stated that he, the incident would negatively affect all aspects of relations between Moscow and Ankara and recommended Russians to refrain from visiting Turkey. Cooperation in the tourism industry between Moscow and Ankara may be stopped. The Russian Federal Tourism Agency said Russia may also restrict or even ban Turkish vessels and aircraft from entering Russian ports and airspace, according to the Economic Development Minister Alexei uh, Ulyakayev. Friends, these are all things that happen just before two countries go to war. 
and, uh, and, and we may see very well that the prophecy that the, 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 the Rabbi uh, Gaon spoke of here, we may see these things coming to pass in the very near future. That could be months away, that could be weeks away. It's hard to say exactly what will happen, what will transpire uh, over the coming months and times there. But uh, nonetheless, I think we're on the edge of it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Later this evening here on the Israeli News Live channel there, we will be bringing you a prophetic teaching there of things as we watch the unfolding of events. It ought to be very interesting. I've gotten a lot of requests. People have been asking me about uh, the two witnesses and my thoughts on that as far as concerning the rapture of the bride. Why do I believe that the bride will actually see the two witnesses. So I'm going to dive into that. I'm going to dive into that, kind of give you a little inside view of what I think their message will be uh, as well. And uh, so for those of you that do watch us here on Israeli News Live, if you're here just for the news, you might want to skip that broadcast. If you like to support this news work, you can. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. Uh, you can contribute there. And those that want to catch this message this evening, I guarantee you one thing. It'll be tough. Fasten your seatbelt and prepare for the ride. It's going to be a rough one. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.